That song is saying, Jesus, you change everything. And the, the only person that gets that kind of change is a person that believes they can get that kind of change from Jesus. You know, there was a, there was a lady in the Bible, and they call her the lady with the issue of blood. They don't give her a name. They just say this lady with an issue. And it describes her issue that she was bleeding for 12 years, constant bleeding. And it describes a lady that was looking for healing and couldn't find it. It said that she spent all of her money trying to find her healing. Went from doctor to doctor, from doctor to doctor. They promised her maybe a solution. They didn't find it. She was an outcast in the society. But this is what she saw. She saw an opportunity. It was just a regular day, and Jesus was walking through her town. And she said to herself, there's a time in your life that you got to separate yourself from the crowd. And you got to start speaking the right things over yourself. And said, I don't know why everybody else is here. They might be here for entertainment. They might be here because they're, they're, they're just wanting to see what's going on. They might be here because uh, it's just part of a religious duty. But I have a 12-year issue I can't solve. And I heard that Jesus is a healer. I heard that Jesus is a source of breakthrough. So what she did, she positioned herself. And she thought to herself, someone say, think to yourself. She got a vision of healing. Right now, someone needs to change their vision. What I mean by that is you're so focused on your problems. You're so focused on what's wrong in your life that you can't see a solution because you can't focus on a solution and a problem at the same time. It's time for you to take your eyes, take your mind off the problem, take your mind off the bad report, take your mind off the sickness, take your mind off the what they said, she said, what everybody's saying, and you got to start putting your mind back on the solution and say this, Jesus, right now, you can change my life. I'm tired of wasting time. I've went everywhere. I can't find my breakthrough. And I heard you're passing through San Bernardino at 4680 Hallmark right here. I'm in the auditorium. I might as well get a breakthrough today. Might as well get a touch of God today. I might as well leave here with a testimony. Come on. Is there anybody here that's saying, I, you know what? Might as well get something out of this. And she said to herself, to herself, do you know that there's times in your life that you're waiting for someone to encourage you and people are so busy they don't got time for you? And it's not that they don't care. Is they're so busy with their own issues? that they're trying to solve, that they just overlook you. But you got to understand this. There's times in your life that you got to encourage yourself. And you got to start changing your negative talk, self-talk, into some positive self-talk and just say this. If I could just, I just start, start thinking, if I could just touch his, his clothes, the hem of his garment, I believe I could get healed. See, stop focusing on who's not for you. Stop focusing on the problems in your home, problems in your church, and get your focus on the answer. Your answer is not in the government. Your answer is not always in a doctor. Your answer is in Jesus Christ. And if you could just get one touch, you could get healed. You could get set free. You could get your provision. You could get your healing. You could get your joy. You could get your peace. Just one touch of Jesus can save your life. Come on. Is there anybody tonight, today, I mean, that just got to say, you know what? Let me get a vision that today, this moment, this day, I'm going to get a touch from Jesus Christ. Give, Come on. Give God some praise here. Say, that's me. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Because any great thing that ever happens in your life, you got to first visualize it. And then you could actually realize it. The enemy already knows that if he captures your mind, he captures your destiny. If he captures your mind, he captures your what? I was talking to someone this week that was dealing with severe, severe fear. And I go, you know, I talked to him for a few minutes. I go, you know, you can't have severe fear unless you're feeding your fear. Fear doesn't start out severely. 
Fear starts out gradually. So if you're feeding your fears, your fear is going to turn into a monster. And either you're feeding your fears or you're feeding your faith. You know why we can't visualize, we can only visualize horrible things? Because you're tuning in and exposing yourself to the wrong content. You know, the Holy Spirit was telling me this week, He goes, you don't, you need to get more exposure to my content, to my spirit, to my word, and you might have to cut out some other content. You know why we're so divided? We're watching too much YouTube. We're watching too much news. We're, we're, we're paying attention to gossip. We need to get our minds back on the Word of God. Come on. Back on worship. Back. Come on. We need to get single-minded, meditated on God's Word day and night. And I go, baby. Because she starts sharing some stuff. And I, I go, man, where'd you get that info from? You know, and she starts sharing some stuff that was, out there like where'd you get that info from well I saw it and I read it and, I, uh, and he goes and one of them was a prophet I go do you know just because they say they're a prophet doesn't mean everything they're saying comes from God if it's not in the word of God you don't have to absorb it and gobble it up you know there's a whole bunch of conspiracy theorists out there that they feed on your fears so every time there's a, whether it's government or there's a vaccine or this or that, they got something scary to say about everything. So it gets you to the point that you're no longer focused on scripture. All you're focused on what they told you. Oh my gosh, Satan is in a vaccine. If I take the vaccine, I'm actually selling my soul to the devil. It's not the mark of the beast. Now if you're for or against it, I'm not getting into that. But understand, it's not the mark of the beast. Because we got Christians in here thinking, if I take the vaccine, I sold my soul to the devil. No, I'm going to say, that's a demon that's taking over your life, taking over your mind. Come on, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Come on, trust in God. Speak the word of God. Get a vision of reaching souls and making a difference in this world. Come on, get a vision of being healed. I know you had this issue for 12 years, but it doesn't mean that you can't get your break through today give God some praise if you believe he's a God of breakthrough the word now this is what I want to say stop making excuses take personal responsibility stop blaming people if you don't like the way your life is look yourself in the mirror we got too many victims nowadays. I am not a victim. Hey, there's nobody going to control my emotions. No one's going to control my thought process. No one's going to control my destiny. God controls my destiny. And I'll tell you this, if I agree with him, I'm in control as well. He said, stop doing that. Take personal responsibility. Show up and get a breakthrough. Stop talking yourself out of what you sh where you should be. Because when you talk yourself out of where you should be, you show up where you shouldn't be. Have you ever got yourself in trouble and say, well, I knew I shouldn't have been here. I should have been in church. How many of you had a, a really bad thing happen on Sunday when you should have been in church? That happened to me. I remember when, when I was trying to be a baseball player. <laughs> I didn't even make the high school baseball team. I was now in my 20s, 18, 19, 20s, around there. And there's a, there's a men's league. It's my second chance to make it to the pros. <laughs> oh, Sunday, baseball. The only time they played it was on Sunday, and it was actually church service time. So you know what I did? I talked myself into going, one more shot. If I make it to the pros... Oh, glorify God. I remember that day was like, I was one of the three stooges playing out there. This is what happened. The first thing that happened, I hit a, a real fireball. And I, oh man. But, and then I was out of shape. So I was running around the bases 
and it was going to be like, they, they, they had no fence, so the ball just kept going. So you got to keep running. So I was around second, it was around third. Now I'm going to be, it looks like it's going to be a home run until I ran out of gas. I fell down right before I hit home plate. And I saw myself trying to crawl to get the home plate. And the ball's still not there. By the time I got there, the ball got, he, he caught the ball, the catcher, and just put his glove right there. Okay, come right here. That was the first play. Second play, I'm in the outfield. They hit a high fly ball. And I'm right under it. I got this, I got this. And it lands on top of my head and bounces right over there. Third play. <laughs> this is getting bad. This is my this is one game. Wow. Wow. The next moment I get hurt, I get cleated in my hands, needs to get stitches. So at the end, I told um, the guys, I go, I think the Lord's trying to tell me something. <laughs> I was supposed to be in church. <laughs> Do you know some of you guys right now? Your biggest problem is you're always out of position. And that's why you can't get a breakthrough. That lady with the issue of blood, she got a position right next to Jesus. She grabbed his heart. She grabbed, grabbed his, his garment. And then Jesus turned and said, who just touched me? Who just got a breakthrough? Who just got a healing? Who just got, who, who, who was that? And then, and then, and then the disciples said, man, Jesus, there's a lot of people surrounding you. We, what do you mean who? Everybody's touching you. He goes, nah, somebody touched me and pulled something out of me. Yeah. And the scripture says she was there. She goes, it was me. And, he, and then Jesus said to her, baby, your faith just made you well. Your vision of you being seen a breakthrough. Your vision, uh, come on, of overcoming. Your vision, come on. We need to kick the spirit of hopelessness. To kick the spirit of fear. Kick the spirit of suicide out of your life. And start getting a vision of overcoming and making a difference in this world. That lady is still preaching to us in 2021. If you're struggling with an issue, you serve a God that's bigger than every issue you got. Give God one more. Okay, ladies, get a position. God puts you part of this family here to be a family member. Sign up, pay up, show up, and get your breakthrough. If she misses her appointment when Jesus is walking through, I'm going to let you know about timing. There's certain timing to do things. If you miss the timing, you might miss your opportunity. Show up. Sign up. Tonight, I mean, tonight also, if you want to come to the concert, Barack is going to be, so who's Barack? Well, Barack is bigger than ever Elevation, church, um, worship team. Barack is, 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 is probably even bigger than Hillsong for sure right now. If you look at their videos, they got 150 million views, 70 million views. It's the biggest Spanish worship team in the world. Wow. And they've chosen to come to the Way World Outreach. We didn't bring them. They said, can we come to your church? Awesome. Tonight. All I know, even if you don't know the language, our worship team is going to be singing some songs in English and Spanish here too. So, but, but, I, but this is what I'm saying. Sometimes you just got to get in the atmosphere yeah. to get your breakthrough. You don't have to show up, but all I'm saying is, ladies, you got to show up to the women's conference, but there's a bonus. We're going to have a worship night. And I believe when there's a, wor when, when there's people worshiping in spirit and in truth, anything can happen tonight. Right. You don't even know the language. Just get in the atmosphere. Come on, come on, just get, come on, get. When you were, when you were in the world, you used to go to all parties. You didn't care if you knew the language, what, what they got there though. If it's a party, let's go. You didn't need to know the people. It was just an opportunity for to party. 
Why would you be any different when it comes to God? Could it be you put more effort in your partying than you put in your relationship with God? And no wonder you're not experiencing the high in the Lord you should be experiencing. Wait. I'm going to get this. Amen. Come on. I'm going to say one more thing. I, I just prophetically speak right now. Stop being a baby. What do you mean, baby? You get offended for everything. I'm not coming back to church anymore. What? Why don't you say that about Walmart? Or Starbucks? Or McDonald's? You should be offended. We're feeding you good food. Come on, we're not no perfect church. Come on, but you're going to get some word here. Come on, we're all in this together. Learn how to be committed to your house. Stop making, come on, stop getting offended out of your destiny. And I've learned this. If you can't stick with it, you'll never get there. How are you going to get to an address if you keep changing the address? Well, I don't want, it's just too much traffic. The truth is, there's going to be times in your life, there's a lot of traffic, but that's the only freeway that's going to get you there. And in that time, you're growing and you're learning. Sometimes God has to slow your life down to start getting your attention. Hallelujah, God is good. How many receive from God already? Come on, God, I'm receiving from God. I'm getting something. All right, let's pray. And, and today what I, I'm going to be talking about and it's so easy to like skip through these subjects, but there's not a more important subject than I could talk to you about than God. Yeah. You know, there's, a, there's stuff that's easy to preach on, on personal success, how to overcome this, how to overcome that. That's easy because everyone can think about, man, I could use that right now, but it's still temporary. But what I wanna talk to you about for these next few minutes, I wanna talk to you about God. Because the only thing you're going to take out of this life, you're not going to take your money out of this life. You're not, you're not going to take your things out of this life. You're not even going to take your husband and wife out of this life and have a husband and wife in heaven. What you're going to take out of this life is a relationship with God and the people you helped nourish or build a relationship with God. And, and today we're going to talk about how good our fathers, but I want to go deeper into that. Because how can you show God, I'll, I'll, I'll use a business term, how can you sell something or a product you know nothing about? Someone asked me um, the other day that they wanted, they had a big event and, and they were saying, they asked me, how do, what would you say to them, to our team, to recruit people to our event? So how would you sell the event? I go, look, this is the first thing. You cannot sell a product you're not excited about. That's right. I mean, come on, listen to this. Eddie. You cannot sell a product you're not excited about. I, got, I was in sales, and, and one of the things we used to say was this, excitement, excitement sells. Yeah. What sells? Excitement sells. The idea of selling anything is you're transferring emotion. Selling is transfer emotion. I'm excited about it. And let me get you excited about it. And if I could get you as excited as I am about it, I got a sale. And I, I think what's happening, the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away. And this is what's going to happen. We're going to be religious, but this is going to be the problem. We don't know who our God is. We know religion. We're fans of a church. We're fans of a worship team, but we don't know God. And how can you sell a God you don't know? So it, it, what we're going to be doing is, is today we're studying theology. You know theology? We're studying about God. We're studying about what? And I want you to know him better so you can show him better. Because if you don't know him better, you can't show him better. And this world needs to see Jesus. And the only way they're going to see Jesus is through believers like you and me. Come on, let's give God just one more praise. Come on, I want them to see. I want people to see Jesus through me. All right, Father, speak to us. Reveal yourself to us. Help us to see you. 
for who you really are. Help us to get a focus, a 2020 vision of who you are that will not be distracted, that will not be deceived, but we'll know this a little better today, that you're a good, good father. You're a good, good God. And you're more for us than any other person in the world, including ourselves. Reveal yourself to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. How many want to get to know God better? How many want to get to know God better? How want to be able to say, I know God personally. And every day I know him better. If you want to know God, come talk to me. I'll introduce you to him. We are here on earth to introduce people to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And I want you to be able to be better at that because when we're better at that, there won't be a seat empty in the house ever. How many guys? Come on. Because when you're on fire, this is what happened. You spread. When you're on fire, you what? You spread. And when you're on fire, you're contagious. But let's look at James 1.16. And it says, Do, so don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. What he's saying is, me and you can be misled about what? And this is, answers the question. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father. Say it with me. God, our Father. Who's this God? He's the one that created all the lights in the heavens. What he's saying is he's the one that created everything. This God that I'm introducing you to, that I don't want you to lose sight of, is the creator of every single thing that you see. He's powerful. He's the creator of the sun. No one's concerned right now about the sun losing energy. You don't wake up in the morning and go, man, I hope God gives enough power of that sun to light up the tomorrow. Because when God creates something, it comes from his power source. And his power source is unlimited. So any power, all power comes from God. Whether it's solar power, electric power, all power comes from him. He's the one that created all lights. And with no light, this is what we have, is death. Soon as there's no sun, there's no power for life. And I can make this simple for you. Without Jesus in your life, without the son of Jesus in your life, you're dying. You're fizzling out. Your emotions are fizzling out. Your family life is fizzling out. Your dreams are dying. Because without God, you're not connected to the source. Yes, you have great potential, but you must get connected to the power source, the God that created all the lights. That's the God that's for you. That's the God that's in you. Jesus said this, I'm the light of the world. What did Jesus say? I'm the what? He goes, I'm the source of all power. I'm the source of all life. And then right after he left, he started teaching. He goes, I'm the light of the world. And he starts saying, you're the light of the world. And what he was saying, the same power that I walk in, I fill you with my light. I fill you with my power. I fill you with my spirit. That when a believer shows up to a location, it might be dark, but he brings hope. He brings healing. He brings breakthrough because he brings God, the creator of light. We got too many Christians that are searching for something that they have in themselves. Be careful that you don't turn into a Christian groupie. Looking for the power that's in you. We got to stop. I want you to get this. It's okay to seek after God in locations. But I want you to learn 
how to see God on your own. That you have a personal relationship with God. That you don't need someone, come on, someone to give you something that you need to discover within yourself. Come on, Christian. Light. Someone say the creator of lights. But it said he's our God, our father. What is he? Our what? And we said this. He's not just a father. He's a good, good father. I want to just say this for the next few minutes here. Is that we need... Our heavenly father, I say, it's more obvious that we need our heavenly father more than ever. We always need our heavenly father. But this will say, it's more obvious than ever than we need him. Now, what happens to a godless society, I'll even say this, a fatherless society. When we started our country, we had a lot of mistakes and there was slavery. A lot of wrong things happened at the beginning and we're continually have to improve. That's the goal. I'm, I, I don't believe we're improving. I believe we're going backwards because this is what we did have, at least at the beginning. In God, we trust. There was still a strong belief that this was one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was part of our Pledge of Allegiance. We're at a point right now that we don't want to pledge allegiance to God and the betterment of our country. And when you take God out of the equation, you take the Father out of the equation, you start developing a fatherless society. What approaches, how, I want you to, how we approach the spiritual will affect our physical. Right now, the biggest pandemic that we have in the United States of America is fatherless homes. And the stats are horrific when the father's not home. Right now, we have over 18.3 million children in the United States of America, not the world, in the United States of America that do not have a biological father, a stepfather, or an adopted father in their home. And I'm going to give you some stats. And the reason I'm going to give you some stats so you'll understand we have a fatherless issue. And without fathers in the home, there's repercussions. And I'm going to tie this to your spiritual life. There's physical repercussions without having a father in the home. There's spiritual repercussions without having a relationship with God, your father. But let's go to the physical first because maybe we could get that first. These are stats that come from fatherless homes in America. One, suicide. 63% of youth suicides come from fatherless homes. Runaways, 90% of all homeless come and runaways come from fatherless homes. High school dropouts, 71% come from fatherless homes. Juvenile detention centers, 70% of the young people that are there, 70% come from fatherless homes. Substance abuse, 75% of adolescent patients, 75% come from fatherless homes. Aggression, 75% of rapists are motivated by displaced anger from being in a fatherless home. Now, how come we don't hear more about this on the local news? Because we're getting to the point that we don't want God our father and we're not interested in any fathers. We want no authority over our life. We want to run our life the way we want to run it. We don't want no authority. We need a father. You need a heavenly father. See, this is 
is only, what the stats I just gave you, is only a physical representation of the tragedy of fatherless society. See, the more we become godless, the more men seek after temporary pleasure and selfish desires to the point that they will abandon God. They'll abandon their family. They'll abandon their integrity. They'll abandon their mission for a short-term pleasure. We don't want God. And if we don't want God, we are choosing catastrophe. Look at this. In the spirit, we just went over the consequences of a fatherless home in the physical, but in the spirit, the consequences are much, much more severe because it's eternal. See, without a relationship with our Heavenly Father, we are empty, hopeless, self-destructive, depressed, full of fear, addicted, lonely, brokenhearted, lost, tormented, spiritually, mentally, stuck, miserable, full of anger and hate, critical, prejudice, violent, abused, and an abuser, suicidal, mentally tormented, full of worry, demonized, sick both physically and emotionally, broken relationships and not knowing how to fix it under a generational curse of poverty, divided family, and worst of all, headed to an eternal destruction without our heavenly father. This epidemic is not just in the United States of America. In the world right now, we have over 153 million orphans, children with no parents, with no father or mother. And this epidemic is growing every single day. 5,700 little boys and little girls are displaced from their family every single day. Why am I talking about this? Because today there's a need for this message about fatherhood more than ever. And your father on this earth might never be a good father, but there's a father that loves you. He cares about you and he wants to fill the gap that your father couldn't fill. Come on, everybody needs a father. We as a church can fill the gap. If there's a huge gap of fathers, maybe we need some more big brothers. Maybe we need some, come on, we need some big sisters. We need some mentors. We need to be some, we need some disciple makers. Right now, maybe we need to open up an orphanage in Mexico. I believe we need to start saying physically we're going to handle the job, but most of all, spiritually, we need to get people connected. Look at this. The good news, man, that was a lot of bad news. But, you know, I've learned this. How can the good news ever matter if you don't know the bad news first? Like, wow, we have a fatherless society. But more than that, the cause of our fatherless society is that we don't, we've abandoned our relationship with the Heavenly Father. If you want to ruin your relationship, take God. If you want to ruin your family, take God out of it. I don't have no Heavenly Father. I don't even believe in God. Okay. You are already at a disadvantage. I was talking to a group this Friday and, and this is, you know, something I said. You know what followers of Jesus Christ are called? Believers. What are they called? And there's only two groups, believers and non-believers. If you're a non-believer, you are handicapped already. You're disabled mentally because you'll never accomplish anything with unbelief. 
If you want to start doing some great things with your life, this is where it starts. Become a believer. Become a believer in a God that created the heavens and the earth. Become a believer in someone that you could never totally understand. Become a believer in the most powerful being in the universe. Almighty God. Omnipresent. Omniscient. He knows everything. And he's almighty. All powerful. Come on. Let's get our thinking higher. Become a believer. I need my heavenly father. The good news, our God is a father to the fatherless. If you feel all alone, when I was six years old, my dad got in a gunfight, chasing after women, got a bullet between his eyes. And within a couple weeks period of time, I was at his funeral crying, seeing my 32-year-old dad in a casket. It's gone. My father is gone because my father was chasing after his sinful desires and he wanted nothing to do with his heavenly father. My father, by default, was on a mission to destroy his family. And he almost did. But my mama, when I was six years old, we were living in the Virgin Islands near Puerto Rico in a little island called St. Croix. At this time, when I was six years old, I never entered into a church because my father told my mother, as long as you live with me, you'll never enter a church again. And she didn't. For seven years, my mom never entered a church. My dad died and my mom made a major decision. We're gonna leave the Virgin Islands, me and you, Marco, no family. We're just gonna move to California and just start over with no connections, just coming here. She knew a few people but it wasn't any blood family lived here. We just moved out here. And I remember within a couple weeks period of time, she took me to church for the first time. And she asked the pastor, I've never introduced my son to Jesus. Would you give me the honor and privilege to teach the little Sunday school for the little five and six year old, the kindergarten kids. And the pastor said, you could do it. And I remember it was a church in LA called John 316. It was a Spanish church. We walked into that church and then they released the little boys and the little girls. And I remember walking up some stairs and we sat down around the table I sat down with a whole bunch of little boys and little girls. And for the first time in my life, I heard about a heavenly father that loved me. My mother introduced me to my father, a good father that would never leave me, that would never hurt me, that would never walk out of me, that would never abuse me, that would never lead me astray a good, good father that would be kind, that he would be a healer, he would be an encourager, he would be a builder. You know, some of us are dealing with some daddy issues and right now you need to right now get healed by the good father. You need to stop focusing on the bad father and get hooked up with the good father. And if you feel right now you have nobody who loves you, there's a good, good father that will direct you right now if you'll let him direct your life. So from that point on, I had an identity. I got a father, a good father, a heavenly father. And every single day, I'm getting to know him better and better. I'm not saying I know him like I really know. I know him, but I barely know him. But the more, the better I get to know him, this is what I found out, the better he is in my mind. 
My biggest problem is not that I have problems. My biggest problem is I don't know my God good enough. Because I don't know him good enough, I get overwhelmed because I don't realize how much backup I really got. If you're worried and you're depressed and you're full of fear, there's only a, re there's a reason. You don't know your daddy good enough. Because the better you get to know your daddy, come on, the, come on, the more confident you are. Come on, the more powerful you are, the more loving you are. Because this is what happens. The better you get to know him, the more you're like him. But look at this, he's a, he's a father of the fatherless. In Psalm 68, 5, look what it says. God in his holy dwelling is a father to the fatherless and a champion of widows. You know what he's saying? If you feel like you're all alone, or maybe you're thinking, man, I don't have a relationship with that good, good father. There's so much I want to share. Maybe you need to come to second service because I'm going to dive deeper probably into some of his attributes. But he's a father that loves you, believes in you, and he celebrates you. There was a scripture I read in, in Zephaniah that I'm probably going to speak about maybe in the Spanish service uh, you know, tonight. But it was a scripture that I read And it really matches up with James 1.18. He says he chose to give us birth, give birth to us by giving us his true word. And out of all creation, we became his prized possession. Say it with me. We, we are his prized possession. Say it with me. It means out of everything I made, the most precious thing I made is you. There's nothing more valuable than you. Have you ever lost your phone and go cuckoo? Like you value that phone. But when you're lost and you're hurting and you're brokenhearted, there's someone that loves you and cares about you and is more concerned about your heart. More, there's no one more concerned than God. And the scripture in Zephaniah that I read, it goes something like this. It talked about when we come into his presence on how God begins to rejoice. And then it says that he starts singing songs of praise over you. Wait a second. You mean God prays in me? See, you not only praise God, God returns and praises you. And I started thinking about that. I go, God praising me? Yeah, he starts speaking life over you. He starts saying, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. I got dreams for you. And I go, well, how can that be? And then God showed me my little grandson. Yesterday, while I was preparing the message, Xander, I haven't seen Xander in around a week. And little Xander showed up to the house. And then one of my daughters said this, guess who's here? I go, who? My boy. And my boy was there, little Xander. And I realized when Xander's around, I start singing and acting really silly. I start singing him songs. I ask him what he wants. He doesn't speak yet. He just goes, uh, and we're like, okay, where do you want to go? He goes, the way you celebrate your grandson is only a tad of how I celebrate you. Come on, you got a father that loves you. He even thinks you're cute. Say, man, I mess up. He goes, I know, you mess up. Xander messes up. I mean, the other day, they, they went to the store to get him clothes, and he threw a tantrum. He gets no clothes. But he's still cute. Come on. And we still love him. You might not be where you should be, 
But God still, come on, God still loves you. He thinks you're so cute and he has a plan for your life. He knows, come on, you're not where you should be yet, but I'm going to take you somewhere. I got dreams for you. I got, back. come on, I, 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 I'm backing you up. There's no way me and you can fail. Come on, give God a praise because you serve a good, good God that loves you and he celebrates you. Let's all stand up. Oh, Lord. Are we learning about our father a little bit? Oh, tonight's going to be good. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I hope it's good. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you how, how crazy sometimes God, what God does. I, I'm going to dismiss it in just a second. I, I mean, God, God has me. Speak. Tonight, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be probably 2,000 people here. Mostly all Spanish speaking. And I did not ask like, I didn't say, hey, Barack, if you're going to come, I want to speak to your crowd. I don't want to speak to a crowd of a whole bunch of people talking Spanish because I don't talk Spanish. And what I mean by that is, is that in the last 10 years, I probably had a few Spanish conversations. That's it. For like two minutes. And the conversations are only two minutes because I got nothing to say. And they said, they chose our church to come. And they said, we want your pastor to speak. So when they told me you want your pastor to speak, I go, okay, because I'm not going to say no. The devil's not asking me to speak. So I go, okay. I'm saying, I'll say yes. And I, I'm going to tell you this. I could look like a fool tonight. But at least I said Yes. Come on. I'm not looking at my fear stop me from stepping in. And, and you know what gets me to step in? Because I love God and I love people. And if I could just share my heart the best way I can, I'm going to do it. I'll do my best and God's going to do the rest. How many understand that? So tonight, if you want to see a little spectacle, you can come out tonight. Say so, it's like we're going back to the fair and you can go in those rooms and see the, the lady with the beard. <laughs> but um, tonight's going to be awesome. But I'm going to end it with this. I want to introduce you in these next just, it's really 90 seconds, to your Heavenly Father. I remember um, I have a brother through my father that I never met. It was probably around 10 years ago. My brother somehow found me. And I was going to meet my blood brother for the first time in my life. And I was already, I don't know, 35, 40 years old. And I met him for the first time. Nice guy, loved him. Talked to him about the Lord. He has given his life to Jesus Christ, which is great. My, and then I've, I met my sister. I have a sister I never met. I got two sisters. One of them I still haven't met. But um, there's someone maybe you haven't met. You've met religion. And maybe you have even Christians that misrepresented God because they didn't know him very well, and you got hurt by them. And I apologize for them, but they're, they're growing just like you're growing. But the greatest introduction I could ever give you is to know your creator, your father. Because until you get connected with him, you're like the fatherless kid. Your stats are really bad. And they're not going to get any better. You could remarry, 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 and go from one drug to the next drug, next drug, one job to the next job to the next job. But this idea, the emptiness that's in you, the identity crisis that we have, we can't fix. But there's a father that you were created to have a relationship with. And until you have that relationship, you're going to be searching. And all I'm saying, he's knocking at your heart's door. Why not let him in? Why not say, yes, I want a relationship with my heavenly father. He's a good God I'm hearing. I want to begin the experience of life the peace, the fullness that he offers me.
I'm this lady with the issue for 12 years that I can't fix. How about letting your daddy come in that created you and let him help you fix you? And at the end, you're going to say, I remember that day I asked dad to come in my life, my heavenly father. And he began to guide me, love me, give me value. And change began that very moment. And the only way to get to the Father, Jesus said this. The name of this church is called the way, the truth, and the... I mean, it's called the way we're allowed. not the way, the truth, and life. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> but Jesus said, I am the way, John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through me. So he's saying, How you, you want to get to that? You want to get to the provision? You want to get to the peace? You want to get to the power? I got a way for you. Just put your faith in me. I paid the price for every wrong you've ever done so you can be forgiven and have a brand new start. If you need a brand new start today and you say, man, I, I need a relationship with God, I want you to take action. God's taking action by knocking on your heart's door, sending his son to die for our sins so we can have a relationship with him. Stop living under a guilt trip. Stop living in the past. Start over today. If you're saying, I, need a, I want to start over my life today and I want my father in my life I'm going to count to three I want my father I want to start over today and I want my father back I'm going to give him permission to lead me to speak into my life when I count to three I want you to raise your hand and say that's me I want my father I want to start over I want my father in my life I need my heavenly father I feel like I'm all alone I need some guidance. I need some help. I, I need some encouragement. When I count to three, or maybe your father hurts you and you're still hurt, why don't you come and get healed by your heavenly father? If you're hurt with your father, you're angry with your father, don't stay in that chair. I want you to come up here because today is your day to get healed from what your father did or didn't do and get healed by your heavenly father today's your day come on today's your day when i count to three say pastor that's me i want a new start i want a new beginning and i want i'm giving permission for my father in heaven to lead my life i want you to raise your hand when i say three one two don't be ashamed there's your moment there's your breakthrough three raise your hands all this building saying that's me i want a new start i want a new beginning with my heavenly father i see that I see that. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see that. Come on. He's going to be a good father. Those that raise their hand, I want you to take one more bold step. One more bold step. Will you give me the privilege of praying with you? We're going to pray with you. We're going to connect you to your heavenly father through faith in Jesus Christ. Today's your day. I'm done leading my old life. I need my heavenly father. Those that raise their hand, come up real quick. Come up here. Leave your seat. Come up here. Give me the, uh, the honor privilege to pray with you. Come on, guys. Come on, we need, come on, girls, we need God. Come on, God, he's asking you. I want to be part of your life. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. Come on, I want to show you how to be a man. I want to give you value, young lady. Come on, I want to give you value. Come on, let's give a hand. Come on, God, someone's coming to their Heavenly Father today through faith in Jesus Christ. How can you be a father, a good father, if you've never been shown how to do that? I get it. I'm for you. I get it. I totally get it. How can you have value in yourself if you've never had your father speak life over you? Some of us had fathers, but they never spoke good into us. You're never going to amount to nothing. You're a failure. You're a nothing. Or some of them even abused us. So now how, how am I going to survive that? Some of, some of them chose drugs over you, women over you, things over you. And they abandon you because they didn't know their heavenly father. They didn't know how to be a father. And now it's a cycle. And, and ladies, if you don't get your affirmation from your heavenly father, you're going to try to get your affirmation from all kinds of men. So why would I just sleep with a guy I just met? Because you're looking for affirmation. Why would I do that? You're looking for affirmation that only God can give you. At six years old, I gave my life to Jesus. I met my Heavenly Father. Today's your day. Are you ready? To, come on, are you ready to allow Jesus to lead your life? Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. Repeat after me say, Jesus, I ask you now to forgive me. 
for all my sins. I believe, I believe that Jesus, you died for all my sins so that I could be forgiven and have a relationship with the Father. Jesus, I open my heart's door and I ask you now to save me, set me free, and fill me with your spirit. I have a heavenly father that's with me. He'll never leave me. I don't need to fear because my father is with me. And from this day forward, I will live for him, follow him, and let him guide me. In Jesus' name, I thank you for saving me today, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. If you need prayer, your Heavenly Father has it here. You can come up for prayer. God bless you. Sign up, ladies. Get in position. You miss it. You're going to be out of position. Get in position. Half the battle is just get in the right room. This room, this weekend, is going to be awesome. Wednesday night services. Don't miss it. Midweek services are awesome. Barack concert tonight. Get your tickets. I don't know. Tell tell. It. Tikiton or some Tikiton or thank you. God bless you guys. You need prayer? Come on up. We'd love to pray with you. Remember this if God's for you, there's nobody come against you. You got a God that's for you. God bless you.